And I am so excited to have you guys joining us today. If you guys will mute on your end, just everybody can mute as you as you log on and keep the line clear. That would be awesome. And Donna may open ask you to open it up at some point. But in the meantime, let's everybody mute down. Um, I'm Cami Gellner. I am the founder of Extraordinary Women Connect. And this is all about connecting great women to great women. And today I am super excited to be bringing you one of my favorite people, Donna Mazzatelli. Donna is so wise when it comes to bringing and putting our best work out into the world, our best words. And the reason I can say this is because she's helped. she was my, my, my book coach, my editor, my publisher of Fire Dancer. And she was also the, the editor of my uh, Pony Ponderings inspiration card. So yeah. I have known Donna for many years and she's been an inspirational light in my life. And I believe in the way she approaches writing books in a way that is, is really from the soul. So you hear me talking all the time about, you know, really being in that space of our soulful wisdom and finding it and, and opening our hearts into how we, how, how our best wisdom is supposed to flow through us. Donna creates this. And so I'm super excited to have her joining us today. And I printed your bio. What did I do with it? I had my um, my mouse quit working right before we started today. <laughs> I, I was like scrambling to get my mouse back up. So I'm going to just, let me just go over here real quick and I'll, and I'll read you a little bit about Donna. Donna believes that finding our voices is critical to living authentic lives. She helps writers connect to their unique core voice so they can share what that is crafted with heart. Donna's life experiences, which included two cancer diagnoses, significant personal family loss have helped her heart and compassion helped her grow her heart and compassion as well as her intuition which is what she offers her clients through the writing and editing process donna's gentle clear guidance and i so agree with that allows writers to explore those deeper places that can be difficult to navigate she can she companions authors through the writing and editing process, helping them know when to pause and when to move forward. What comes forth is a book that is memorable, impactful, and masterfully created. Donna loves, especially loves working with authors in the genres of memoir, biography, and personal growth and development. She works in a variety of genres, including historical fiction, vision and fantasy fiction, health and nutrition, spirituality, death and dying, parenting, adolescent psychology, business entrepreneurship, as well as children's books that address social and environmental issues. Donna recognizes that everyone has stories to tell. The more we share our stories from our hearts, whether fiction or nonfiction, the more our readers will connect with us and be transformed. This is how we heal ourselves and our world. So this is Donna, my friends, and um, I'm super excited to have her taking you through this workshop today. When I think about putting your voices and, and getting visible out in the world, this is one of the most important ways that you can really open up to creating a platform for your voice to carry forward. And even more so finding that core message that that you stand for. So when we're writing a book, we're, we're, we're really putting a stake in the ground. You guys often hear me talk about that, putting a stake in the ground for something that we stand for, something that we're meant to stand for, something that we're really attached from a purpose perspective. And that's what Donna does. So um, with that, I'm gonna introduce you to Donna. And before I do that, one more thing. Um, and we'll tell you more about it as we as we wrap to the end of this. I'm super excited that Donna and I are going to be doing a five day wild woman writing retreat in Evergreen, Colorado, April 25th through 30th. We'll tell you more about it at the end of the call. But I just wanted to plant that seed. So this starts to plant the seeds of what it is that you're wanting to put out in, in the world and know that there's going to be an opportunity for you to be able to take that even more deeply um, and, and really um, dedicate some space and time to yourself on, on the flip side of all of this. So with that, Donna, I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm going to pin your post or your, your and you guys may want to um, on your Zoom call, change it over to speaker view so that you can see all of Donna and, and really have that experience with her. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, Donna. Thanks, Cami. 
Well, welcome everybody. It's so exciting to see so many people here. So it just tells me that there's lots of things percolating for people, which is all is super awesome. So just as Cami said, it was like a perfect segue. So what we're doing today is really, it's all about planting seeds. So it's, it's that we have to create something from the ground up. And so it starts with, you know, planting the seeds into the soil so that strong roots can grow out underground so that when something comes out above ground and as it grows stronger and bigger, it has all that foundational support underneath. So this process that we're starting into today is the first steps of a process that I do in two separate phases usually. And it's all about creating that foundation, that getting that, I call it a touchstone. And the reason I call it a touchstone, what that came to me about, about a year or so ago, is that we need something to hold on to, something to look back at, something to remind us of why we're doing what we're doing. And it's especially important as we go into the writing process, because what will start to happen, and even those of us who, who have been writing for a while, it happens to all of us, it happens to the most famous authors out there that you can think of, we get to that place where the saboteurs, that inner critic comes up and says, what the heck are you doing? And why are you doing it? And who do you think you are? And who's gonna wanna hear your message? And it's all been said before and blah, 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 it goes on. So this touchstone is a way to come back to something that reminds you of what it was that first started to percolate inside that started urging you to do something that you know, wanted you to bring something forth. So it's something that you'll be able to come back to. Um, and not everybody after today will immediately start into the writing process. I'm sure of that. But what, I'm get, what we're doing here is you will have something to look at periodically and it'll help you remember and it'll help you when getting that urging, when that urge starts to get really um, intense, you'll know and it'll be that you'll be able to come back to it and say, this is what I'm doing and this is why I'm doing it. So the way we're gonna go through this, I have nine questions set out. We're gonna take them three at a time and then, and I'm gonna speak about them a little bit um, to give you a little bit more, a deeper understanding of what I'm asking for here. And then I'm gonna open it up so that people can share for a, a few minutes, we'll take so we'll take them in three and allow people to share, anybody who's willing to kind of put it out there. And then we'll go on to the next three and the next three. So, and along the way, if anybody has questions, I'll try to watch the chat, but I'll also, um, I'll, I'll kind of lean into Cami here to that if something pops up that we really need to address that she'll let me know, okay? So when, so my experience with authors, and here's another piece I guess I wanna say before we move forward, is a lot of times when I'm coaching with authors and we start into the writing process and people are very excited to get started and they get going. And then if we haven't gone through this process, if I've come to, into working with somebody who maybe had done a bit of their writing before and doesn't feel like they really need to go through this foundational piece, and, and I will honor that, I've often found though that we end up actually coming back to it because sometimes we all of a sudden get stuck and it's not about a writer's block. It really is about that stuff that comes up that really wants to just shut down the process. So, um, so that's why I feel like this is so important. So I'm so glad that you get a piece of this today. Um, so the first thing that, that I want you to think about is not the book that you plan to write or that you're considering but why do you want to write a book? And I think that's a really important question to explore because it's, it's not about, we're gonna to get to the specifics in a minute, but it's just about why do I wanna write? Why, and why is it that I wanna possibly write a book? Why would I entertain this thought? So um, I'd love for you to take, for, take a few minutes now and be with that question.
Don, I muted you, so you might unmute yourself. Okay, since a lot of people have their video off, I can't tell where people are in the process. So I'm gonna just tack onto this and give you a few more minutes. But the second question is, have you been feeling the urge to write a book for a really long time or has it come up recently? And how recent? And then what's triggering that urging? Um, uh, for instance, you know, maybe since you were a child, somebody loved, you know, people said, oh, you are such a great writer. Someday you need to write a book. Or maybe at some other point in your life, people have been saying that to you. Or you have such an amazing story. You need to share that with the world. So it can come from external, but it can also be an internal thing that's going on for you. So it may be that I have this message to share and I think the platform, the best way for me to share it is through the writing of it, as opposed to maybe going out and doing it in some other way. So piggybacked on why do I want to write a book? It's where is this urge coming from? So spend a few more minutes on that. And the last question in this part before we start sharing is how will writing a book serve me? So these kind of all tie together, but I did, you know, have separated them out. So how will writing a book serve me? And then how will it serve others? From my perspective, it's important that any book we put out into the world has to not only serve us, but serve others as well. Um, and sometimes people consider that it should only serve others, but I do believe there is a piece that it has to serve us too. It needs to, it needs to do something for us.
So about another minute, and then I'm going to ask you to open up your mics and and show your beautiful faces so we can share. Okay, well, I would love to hear from some of you. So um, this is your time to almost make a declaration out loud that you really want to write a book. And um, I'd love to hear a bit more about that. So who wants to speak? Holly. Hi, Donna, it's great to see you. Hi, Cami and all the other too. ladies. Oh, it's so good. Um, I apologize, I wasn't present for all of the questions, but I did take notes on the, the last couple. Um, my book is gonna be about um, women educating and empowering women for self-advocacy for their bodies, um, which does not serve my brand at all. Um, but I have this quote on my vision board that says, your brand must be a movement. And um, being a young mom, who was raised in an environment where you didn't talk about things like periods and body and how to check for lumps and different things. I've had an interesting health journey. And um, I, I, my vision for my book is to really tell laughable stories about things that I experienced while still telling the story about how I, how I um, was able to discover my ovarian tumor and because of the fact that I self-advocated. And um, so how it will serve me and others, me, when I wrote a chapter in Ready to Fly, it was probably one of the most healing experiences I've ever had, reliving some moments with that ovarian tumor. And um, I feel like it, this will serve in healing me as well as being an outlet for others uh, to have resources and knowledge of conversations that they've never had about being a woman. So that's that's thank kind you. of my mission and my goal. Wow, thank you. You got goosebumps. Thanks Holly. for sharing that. Yeah, me too. Thanks. Sarah. Well, I'm excited to be going right after Holly because um, the how will the book serve me? The first thing I wrote down was cathartic growth, release, and healing. And so, um, and I love the idea that part of this it's like. 80% of it right now is for me. 20% would be for my readers. Um, and more of the, the release and the healing aspect of it. But I'm hoping to get speaking opportunities and other work engagements from it. And then how would it serve others? Um, a lot in the same line of Holly is so somebody doesn't have to go through what I went through. So to learn from, from um, if not my mistakes, the mistakes of my employer. So, um, yeah, I, I, I love that Holly went first with that because it didn't make me feel so selfish with it. And to say, yes, this is part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Sarah. Sandy, go ahead. I'm so excited to be here. Cami, it's finally nice to see you face to face. You too, Sandy. Hi, Holly. <laughs> um, so I have started my book, which is kind of a memoir and personal growth. So I feel like I'm in the right room. And I wrote down that um, from an internal space, when I was four years old, I had a really spiritual experience about expressing myself. And so it started very young. I started writing very young. I started expressing myself through singing and words and songwriting and poetry. A lot of it's just been my own internal processing, but I have shared especially in the singing realm, I was a professional singer. So I, I did share in that realm. Um, but, but the fat, past few years, I feel like, and even when I was singing, um, I, feel, I, I have had people say things like, my words have created a space where they can heal. Mm. And that my words or even the songs that I would sing created an atmosphere that someone could step into and become who they were supposed to be to. And so I, I want to write a book um, so that I can continue that process. And 
I think it's the way I live out like the unique puzzle piece or the unique snowflake that I am in the world is through writing and speaking and singing and inviting others to be who they are. And I believe we each have a signature sound and that that's in the way we hear one another. It's also the word choices we use, the language we pick, just the way we move, the way we do things, the way we show up, the way we dress, you know, what all of that is part of the signature, the signature piece of who we are. And I just have the deepest passion in my heart to release other people. And I think as a woman, I have had to fight to be me and to fight to not listen to the words, you're too much, you're too sparkly, you're too whatever. And I see that um, shame, guilt, and repression in other people, but women seem to carry it more. And I have four daughters, so I see it there. And so I just wanna live the rest of my life through the work that I do with horses also in um, weaving the story of my life with horses and people and the creative piece to help other people get to the end of the book and go, if she can do that, I could do that. Nice, nice. So, Thanks, Sandy. Thank you. Who else? We have time for a couple more people, at least. Laura, just uh, in Michelle. case I can't see everybody, just or yeah, just open your mic and go. Let's <laughs> in case I don't see everybody. Hi, hi. This is Michelle. I don't know if you if Laura was going to go since you called her, but I can I can wait. Michelle, please, yes, go. Okay. <laughs> so I think my my story is different. I did not grow up wanting to be a writer. English was the least favorite subject behind like history and science. I liked math. <laughs> Um, I, I didn't intend to ever write, but I became an instructional designer as part of my corporate world. And then I've written blogs and, and all kinds of stuff for my entrepreneurial world. And about 10 years ago, I woke up one day and decided I needed to write a book. It just hit me. And I knew the name of the book from the very beginning. And I knew the premise of like the storyline, small town, Texas, late 60s, Vietnam era. And I wrote the first seven chapters and I put it away because life got in the way. And last year in October, a friend of mine said, oh, I published my book. And I was like, oh gosh, I think I have a book still and I have to go look for it. And I didn't have a digital copy, I had a printed copy. So I, I typed it all back in and rewrote it. And I never knew how the, the it's a fiction. So I never knew how, did I say that right? No, nonfiction. I, anyway, it's, it's not a true story, <laughs> but it's put in. And um, when I picked, up I wrote the next four chapters in like hours and then the ending came through and I wrote the ending and then I went back and kind of put you know chapter 12 through 25 together um and I just it went live yesterday on Amazon Kindle nice and um I'm and so like I don't know how my service of my book it's just a story that I felt like I needed to tell um and if I can inspire someone, I guess, to say, hey, just if you've got this inspiration, you know, write it, you know, and, uh, and get it out. But I know that I have more stories in me that even this one, I thought it was one book. And as I'm writing it, like I'm writing things down, like there's four more books that came out of this thing that's supposed to be one book. And then my next book is um, non nonfic no, yeah, nonfiction, because it's true. So like, I have questions about that, but that's my story. I just don't feel like I'm a true author because I didn't dream of always wanting to write like other people. Oh, oh, <laughs> well, Michelle, I will counter that right now. So yeah, <laughs> you are an author. You've, you've published a book and anybody who's even writing a book, you're an author. You know, yeah. it's like that. Yeah, it, it isn't, doesn't have to be a lifelong uh, endeavor or, you know, dream or aspiration, not at all. So, and I will make a comment about fiction as okay. well, because I do think that fiction, we need fiction. We truly need fiction. Fiction is entertaining. Fiction a lot of times gives us the opportunity to look at issues and, and um, you know, contemplate something that maybe if we're reading it as nonfiction, it might be more challenging, but, you know, we can with the help of a perspective of different characters with their different perspectives, we can look at things from different from different ways. So I think fiction is a, a is amazing. It's it's another wonderful, 
you know, vehicle for writing for sure. Thank you for so, that. Because yeah. as you said that, you know, in the, without getting too deep and in, in taking up your time in the late sixties in Texas, there were a lot of things women couldn't do and the sixties don't feel very far away, you know, is historically, but we couldn't even own property or bank accounts in the late sixties. And so I guess when it, you look at it from that perspective, it's like, it does allow people to say, wait a minute, like we still have a long way to go. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, so yeah. thank you for that, Donna. I appreciate it. Absolutely. That. Well, thank you. Thank you for bringing that into the conversation. So I know Laura, you had your hand up. Do you want to go ahead? So um, Donna, as you know, I don't even know that I'm writing a book, but I know that I like to write. And for me, as with the other ladies that shared, writing for me is cathartic. I feel like I have these words that just need to get out of my body and onto paper. And then I, um, and then I share them. I share them with my email list. I specifically write about midlife and going through midlife and what it's like uh, a, as a woman in midlife. And so for me, my writing is all about raising up other women. I'm doing it so that when I, as I go through midlife, I am raising myself up. And so I like to share these thoughts and what I'm thinking so that I can raise other women up because I believe that um, when women in midlife own who they are and what matters to them, they become powerful vessels for their in their lives, in the community around them and, and in the world. And so I want to take my stories and raise other women up in midlife to let them know that they're not too old and it's not too late to live a purpose-filled life. So that's what I'm doing. Now, whether it becomes a book, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. And that's okay. I mean, that's, that's okay too. And I think to your point and to what others have said, it's like we, that and going back to what I said earlier, I do believe that we write first for ourselves. Um, you know, especially if we're writing memoir and, um, you know, we're sharing a part of us, um, you know, or whether it's our whole life or a, a, an experience that we've had as Holly is talking about, it's, it's first we get it out so that we get it out of ourselves, get it onto paper. And there's a, we, it's the spiral, um, as Cammie well knows the spiral, it's the spiral that when we revisit something, we heal at a deeper level. Every time we come back to it, we heal deeper and deeper and deeper. So that's what happens first. And then as through the process of writing and editing, then we get to the part where we make sure that there's, there's something for the um, for the reader as well, that, that it is for the reader as well. We make sure that it really is going to be this collaboration in a sense. So, um, so yeah, so, but exploring your writing, getting it out, having that impulse to write, whether it's going to go into a book or not, keep doing it. I encourage everybody to do that. That's, it's really important. We don't necessarily have to know where the destination is taking us, but to be on that journey. So, I'm ready to, let's go on to the next questions and then I'd love to hear from more of you. So, and if this is working, we'll just keep staying in a big group and, and sharing so that everybody can hear. So number four, if, if I've identified the particular book I wanna write, as some of you have already said, why do I wanna write this book? So, we've, so some of you already expressed out loud a little bit about that, but you can take it a little bit deeper. Why is it that you want to write it? Um, now that we've had even more conversation, is there more that is coming up in, in considering that? The second part of that is, is it time? I'd love for you to hold off on that part. I, I have that question there. I mean, if you already know the answer without a doubt, go ahead and answer it. But I almost feel like we can come back to that at the end um, after we finish going through the rest of the questions. So take a few minutes on this one now.
And if you want to go ahead on to the next part of that same page, which is what your what your story is intended to do. And it could be all of the above. Um, it could be specific ones here to offer hope or inspiration. Somebody had uh, put in the chat about can a book entertain? Absolutely, as we talk about fiction. But sometimes even memoir can be to entertain, bringing humor and um, you know, bringing shared experiences. So think about that as you continue with these questions. Um, what would your book be intended to do for the reader? And if you're ready to go to number six, the last question. So I specifically called out in this memoir or personal growth and development. Um, if you're writing, like Michelle talked about writing fiction, if your book is something else in a different genre, then again, let's hear about what that is, what genre you are writing in. But if it's, if it's personal growth and development, I have the question here that I'd love to know if, and for you to entertain whether you're going to be willing to include parts of your own personal story in it. So a personal growth and development book to me is a little bit different than a how-to book because I feel like in the sharing of parts of ourselves or even parts of client stories. Um, but I also, I also appreciate when the author is willing to share parts of themselves, um, especially when we know that a topic has been written about chances are it is has been written about it's your opportunity by yourself and your story it's your opportunity for the reader to connect with you personally to to um, to connect with you and to make uh, develop a trusting relationship with you so that what you're sharing um, is going to they're going to feel comfortable hearing it from you receiving it from you and you know applying it in their lives so to, to me it's like books that do involve us, that we bring ourselves into it are just that much more, um, they just add a deeper dimension to it. So I'll let you guys go with that for a little bit longer.
one thing you might add into this one is, is what are those stories that feel uncomfortable that that help us tap into I mean just give those stories a name whatever you know it can be just the title of what that story was because that starts to plant the seeds of where the arc way can go mm -hmm. yeah that good point and we've got the time so yeah take a few minutes to just go ahead and explore some of those what would be those specific stories and you can think of them as maybe um you know like moments in your life or like either it was an aha moment or something that was really tough that that you came through that as a result of that you came to a very different place in your life um, like those key peak moments in your life. And sometimes they're not so peak either. I mean, sometimes they're just, they're subtle and yet something profound came out of it. So think about that, you know, what kinds of those stories, the high ones and the ones that are kind of more quiet that whisper. I like that, the, the ones that whisper. Yeah. We'll take just a couple more minutes and then I'd love for you to open your mics and go on video and let's hear from you. Okay, how about if we open it up? I see lots of great chat going on over here too. So if anybody wants to speak out loud about what they've said in the chat, please bring that out up front too. So who wants to talk through four through six? Who wants to tell us kind of what's coming up for you? I'll go. <laughs> okay. For the fun of it, hello everybody and Cammie. Um, okay, why this book? So I had an experience at 19, a near death experience involving a car accident and all of that. So that's definitely the personal touch that I will put in this book. Um, but I want to show others a perspective they may not have considered about adversity and healing, but through humor. <laughs> um, because I have a lot of really good stories, a lot of really wacky things that happened, but good stories that tie in with um, deepening intuition and sharing my gifts and that whole thing. Um, what 
store, what is this story intended to do? Inspire, encourage, entertain, and educate. And yes, personal growth and development. And it'll include parts of my own story, like I just shared. And it is around everything I just named out loud. Um, car accident, PTSD, intuition, gifts, all that thing, all that. Wow. Love it. I love it. I love uh, just bringing that essence of you up, right? So you hear me talk a lot about the essence of you and what you just hit on there, Ashley, is it's like, I'm going to look at this tough, these tough times, but bring that humor side of me through. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really powerful when you can, you know, find, you know, who are you? What's the part of you and tell your stories in a true way that's, that's like you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like you're bringing, you're going through some tough stuff. So there's that dark part of it, so to speak. But then you're bringing light in, in with humor, bringing light into the world is is wonderful. Mm -hmm. We need laughter. Mm -hmm. So what a great way to, you know, help people be with some deeper information. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like what Dorothy said. She said, humor shows humanity. Yes. Yeah, that Absolutely. is a good point. I haven't Very thought good. of that, but yes, very true. So who else? Just open your mic if you're ready to speak and please just share. I mean, as we've already said, everybody getting to share with each other, somebody made the comment over here that it's making other ideas come out for others. So please share with us. Well, I want to write a book about um, how to manage people because that's my area of expertise. But I see that when I write those books, I need to put more of me in them. Mm. And I think that's where my gap is. That's why the books are too academic because they're not meant for academics. They're meant for practitioners. Mm -hmm. So you know, you've sparked some ideas with me and I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome, Karen. Well, it goes back to that humanity piece, right? It's like the more that we can connect with somebody's stories, even in the midst of being taught something, it's like it helps us connect with our own humanity. Our, and it, it also, what I love about when we share stories is we can't help but um, reflect on ourselves. So if I'm reading something that happened in your life, I am going to reflect on my own life, even if I've had a totally different experience. But if that, if what you've shared speaks to some universal emotions, um, a universal perspective, I'm going to connect with that and connect with it in my own life in some way. So that's where I think the beauty of, um, of sharing our stories comes in. And we will we actually learn more, I think. I mean, I think it, it deepens our learning of whatever it is that's being um, you know, given to us. So I'll just toss in here, Karen, well, because when, I, uh, when, um, Don, when I wrote Fire Dancer, I wrote like 11,000 words. Oh, I'm gonna write a book in a weekend kind of thing. And then I read it and I didn't like it. I was like, I didn't know what to do with it. And then I had Donna read it. And she's like, it's missing your stories. And when it was so, so personally rewarding to go back and integrate my stories into all of those different teachings. So it's very, you know, how to kind of things. And it was when you put your story into it, it's where the real light of you shines through. Yeah. Well, and I think, well, what I think is so you, funny am I is that I think go it's, ahead. I think it's so funny because it's what I do in the classroom, but when I write, it disappears. And so you just pointed that out to me and I, I really appreciate it. So I will add something just because of what my experience is. I'll, Karen, I don't know if this will ring true for you or not, but when I write by hand with, and it's hand to heart, I mean, it's heart to hand actually, you know, going the other way. When I write by hand, my heart comes through. But when I draft on the computer, my head comes through. 
So I notice even when I'm writing a blog, I get very cerebral when I'm doing drafting a blog on the computer. So if I will go take the time and write it in a journal first, write it in a notebook, and then put it on to, to, into the computer and then tweak it at that point, it's like now I'm, I'm doing the best of both worlds, which is I'm merging heart and head, you know, and it, something then comes out. So I don't know if that will, if that can serve you in any way, but that, that has been my experience that I need to write by hand first. <laughs> And I'll just also throw out there too, is the location where you write really matters. I think it did for me anyway. I, I could not write in my, I actually did write on the computer, but I needed to do it in my favorite chair in the living room, which is kind of surrounded by nature versus in my office. Um, so the, 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 where you find your creativity can be really essential as well. Where you get inspired. That's a good point. Yeah, very good point too. And by the way, I forgot to say at the very beginning today, I will show you that too. Cami had invited a candle. So I lit a candle on behalf of all of us, a rainbow candle today. So, because I do feel like writing is, is sacred. So yes. um, I always light a candle when I'm going to work on my own writing as well. Please share. More stories. Donna, oh, this is this is Cindy. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Cindy, then go? Sherry. Go ahead, Cindy. Oh, okay. Oh, thanks. Uh, Donna, I appreciate what you said because I thought I was the only one that couldn't type and, and write. <laughs> I have to hand write <laughs> everything also. But um, Karen, I, I loved your, uh, your story. And, and my book is... Um, really a book in uh, lessons in life and leadership. And, but it is by no means a textbook and it's uh, stories about my adventures with my horse, Bob, who happens to be deaf and uh, the lessons that he's taught me. And um, so I call it a personal growth and development memoir. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, I, I really want it to be just these little, little short stories that people uh, learn something from and can kind of flip maybe their negative narratives into something positive, which is what I've had to do with uh, Bob, my, my crazy deaf horse. So anyway, I, I appreciated what you, what you both said. Thank you so much. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Cindy. That's great. What a great story. Thank you for that. Sherry, I know you, you were up. Okay. Well, I just want to first say I loved listening to everybody so far. And my story that I want to share is um, profoundly, um, you know, whenever I think about it, I'm like, you know, it's very, it, it, it's a very heavy weight on me. So it brings me back to my early 20s when I was um, 21 years old. I went immediately after undergraduate school and uh, to graduate school. And it's really hard for me to even say the name of the graduate program that I was in, but I was in a graduate program in social work. And my first year field placement, I was at Manhattan State Psychiatric Hospital, the state psychiatric psychiatric hospital for a 21 year old. I had a key like one flew over the cuckoo's nest and I would open and shut the state, you know, the, the wards. And I would try to help people the best of my ability as a 21 year old um, to be compassionate and caring and a good listener, everything about social work skills. And there are some things that happened during that field work placement where my field work advisor, um, would come to meetings with his zipper down and he was an alcoholic. And yeah. I would say to my field work supervisor at the graduate program about what was happening and I was completely ignored. Uh, and it wasn't until later on that they took the place completely off as a field work placement for social work students. And my second year, I did not have a good experience. I was working uh, in a hospital with children in the neonatal unit um, in a uh, 
crisis intervention type program where the parents or their children terminally ill. And it was just really difficult, but yet I tried my best. So anyway, to get to the bottom of it, at the very end of my second year, uh, years ago when you were a social work student that had something called process recordings and you would show your recordings to your fieldwork supervisor and my fieldwork supervisor would say, you know, you really haven't experienced any pain in your life. You've never had suffering. So I don't think you're cut out to be a social worker. And I would say to myself, pain and suffering, like what do I have to do to be able to become a social worker? I couldn't understand it. And I never felt that I would be getting the tools that I really needed. And academically, I was doing really well, you know, grade wise. But what happened to me was a very traumatic event. So at the very end of my second year, when I was to graduate, um, the same field work advisor at the college said to me, you know, you really need more life experience. So you can't graduate with everybody else. Uh, you need to go out there and start to feel what pain and suffering is all about. Always brought me back to that. You li and she even once said to me, you know, you lived a sheltered life. So, um, I felt very rejected. I couldn't understand it because it wasn't like even, I felt like I was thrown under the bus. Well, what is a social worker supposed to feel in order to help others? And I thought I was helping. So I was 22 at the time. And since then, a number of things have happened to me. I've been sexually assaulted. I lost a son to suicide. Um, you know, a number of deaths and traumatic experiences in my family. But it always brings me back to the graduate program. And I really want to write this book to dear professor so-and-so. And in my book with the different chapters is to go through what pain and suffering has looked like for me over the years, but yet how I've overcome it with compassion and healing to help others. So I'm the kind of person I had reached out to the Mental Health Association and they did an underwriting, they got a grant for me to help people one-on-one -on -one who have lost loved ones to suicide. And I've been doing that, writing articles in the past for the organization. Um, my career was at the National Multiple Sclerosis Society and I've helped people with disabilities and um, had gone to the White House a couple of times to meet different presidents to advocate on behalf of those who can't help themselves. And it's sort of like, it always brings me back to even that original trauma of being rejected, but yet having the resilience to move forward. So I'm trying to connect it to have a voice later on in life to say, you know, here I am, I've gotten through it. And it's to go back to that professor somehow in my writings to have some sort of closure. You know, I, I, it sounds yeah. very fragmented, but I'm trying to get some help with, you know, putting it together. Like That's overcoming right. adversity, I, overcoming adversity, being able to um, go through life and have things happen, but do things through healing to help others, even though things have happened in the past. Right. I, I think it's, it doesn't, it, it doesn't sound necessarily fragmented to me. Yeah. It does sound like there's actually a very beautiful flow that you create that does go back and then forward and bring us to, you know, bring us full circle. It really, it sounds like you have that. You have and I think sometimes yeah. in the writing process too, things come even more yep. for full circle. It's like, you yes. know, these pieces that belong there in your heart. And as you start writing, the pieces really start to integrate together. Exactly. And one of the things, so I, the thing that I found interesting, Sherry, was that they were telling you how you should define what adversity and trauma was. Like everybody, like one level of trauma for me might be horrific for someone else or not as much for somebody. Like I think with the Me Too movement and women finally coming out and saying we have had enough of everything, I think more of us need to say, we're writing about our story, we're telling our, our story and we're bringing forward these people to hopefully make it where people will stop and think, well, maybe they would write about me if I, or maybe they would go on social media, like to get them to at least show up and think about what they're doing. Because as women, we're done. 
We're done mm -hmm. hiding. We're done not talking. We're done not supporting each other. And we're coming out and telling our stories. That's and I think, that, I think it's important to support when I, I, luckily I didn't have anything like that in my life, but I could tell other people about your story to help support you, right? So I think as women, as if we come together, say, yeah, I didn't go through that, but I got your back and I'm going to help share your story and help put it out there so that more people can learn. And I think as women, if we, if we come together and agree to help like eWomen Network, I don't know how many of you are eWomen, but lift as you climb, right? Let's help each other out. And so I just think your important, your story and everybody else's story is important to share. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks Michelle. So uh, not to um, uh, minimize your story at all, Sher Sherry, but I will tell you, I just worked with a client that was writing a book. She's a nutrition, a dietitian, and she came to being a dietitian as a result of her own experience with finding out that she had celiac disease. And she was diagnosed way back in the 90s when there wasn't, it was just the name had just kind of come out. It wasn't, hadn't even been around very long. So there was nothing, there was no support. And she went to a doctor who told her, it looks like you'll have to just eat rice cakes for the rest of your life. And he thought he was being funny. And of course it just, you know, like hurt her deeply. I mean, it pained her deeply because she was struggling. She's just written a book and her ending of her book is to doc a, a um, note of gratitude to Dr. Rice Cakes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because, um, you know, because of you, I went on this whole journey and here I am and here's what I'm doing. Here's what I did in my own life. Here's what I'm doing for others. And so, you know, thank you very much. You were the catalyst for everything I've done. So I don't know. I just had that sense to tell to share that story. No, so, thank you for doing that. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to ask if we go back to the questions, I, I would love to hear more and we are going to have another time to share one more time. So I'm gonna just call out the, the last three questions at one time. So you can just look, take at all of them. Um, so the first one is what's the core message of your book and who is it for? So it's like, if there's one thought, I always think of it this way. If there's one thought that you're gonna leave a reader with, if there's one thing they walk away with, what is it that you want them to walk away with at the end? And who is that reader? Who is that person? that you are envisioning who will be holding your book, their, your book in their hands. And then again to that, it's along with the core message is it's in furtherance of that is what do I want them to walk away with? So that can be more than that core message, but it's like, what is it that I really want to impart to the reader in telling my story? And then the final question is kind of an in your face question. And I put this one here because this is the voice of the inner critic that will be coming up in the future, I can guarantee you. And it's why am I the one to write this story and share this message? And I think it's so important that we get clear about that because that's the challenge that's gonna come up is that that voice is gonna come up and say, why are you the one to tell, you know, who do you think you are? All of that stuff. So it's like, why am I the one to write this story? So I just want you to take we're gonna take about 15 minutes, not, maybe not quite 15 minutes, at least 10, so you can go through those questions.
I'm going to give you about one more minute to wrap up and then we're going to open it up for sharing again. Okay, so you will you obviously have the worksheets that you can continue to work to work with them after our call today for sure. So um, I hope that you will make use of them and keep working with them. So I'd love to hear from some of you though to to what came up in these last three questions. Um, did something really pop out in a way that surprised you, um, or? Did it, re, did it confirm something for you? So I'd just love to hear from some of you before we wrap. We'd love to hear from some of you we haven't heard from. Absolutely, that would I be awesome. I can see somebody some like never going, seen. <laughs> like, you know who I'm talking about, don't you? <laughs> Where'd you go, Mariah? <laughs> She did. Yeah, Mariah, you you said you had a you had something <laughs> percolating. <laughs> Talk about being put on the spot, guys. Yeah. Um, no, these last questions actually I ended up like going back and answering a bunch of other things because I was they really brought me down to like my idea is very surface surface, like, oh, it's going to be fun. And I can do this with it. And I can do that with it. And oh my gosh, it can also, you know, bring in this aspect to that. I love to into this book. And then it kind of was like, oh, wait, there's a deeper core here, which I knew there was, but I just didn't vocalize it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like a much more historical and um, family and like all these other things coming into it. I'm like, oh God, that feels so good. Wow. Very nice. <laughs> I'm so excited. So, <laughs> I so knew there was memoir? something you had to say. <laughs> <laughs> so is it memoir? Is that what it is? Am I? No, not no? really. It's more grimoire. Grimoire. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a Mariahism. So just. Um, yeah. Got it. I, I'm with you. Well, thank I'll you. I'll explain it all later, but I won't take up okay. your time here. <laughs> cool. Well, who else? Who else, especially we haven't heard from? Please jump in. Hello. I need to stay off uh, video because my internet is so bad. Okay. Um, <laughs> I live That's I funny. live way up in the mountains in uh, British Columbia and we're oh. buried in snow and yeah so I, I just don't have a very good connection um so yeah I I uh, my core message uh, I've got a very interesting memoir percolating in me um and it it's directed to any people who are alone in their darkness um and and the core message i think is that resilience can be learned and to take hope mm. um so yeah i'd like them to walk away with the feeling that uh that the light shines even when it's dark that that beauty and love exist whether we see it or not Beautiful. And why should I tell this story? Well, <laughs> I've lived in very many dark and evil experiences, yet I live now in the light. Uh, something in me survived, and, and I feel like I really need to share that so someone else might survive too. Thank you, Kara. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sounds like it'll be a powerful story for sure. 
Yeah, if I can get it out. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? We have a few more minutes to, to share. If you shared before and you want to share some more, it's okay. <laughs> Chime in. Kathy, we haven't heard from you. You just you just typed it in. <laughs> yeah, I'm hiding in the shadows. <laughs> Um, well, I'll just I'll just sort of reinforce um, what I just wrote that um, by people sharing their experiences, there's you know there's a lot of um, there's a lot of um, pain uh, in our journeys uh, that many of us experience uh, with the gift of life <laughs> and the things that we overcome. Um, in our lives, uh, health-wise and whatnot, the gift of life also uh, br um, brings light to some of those darkest corners, and um, that in itself is resiliency, and there's a lot of messages and lessons to be learned from this exercise, so, or this experience um, of sharing this, so thank you so much. I'm, I'm oh, learning to you. tap into some of those feelings that I might want to suppress because they hurt, but you really need to experience it to let let the light shine again too, right? Totally, exactly. You know, yeah. Kathy, yeah. there was times parts in Fire Dancer that I sobbed through writing it, right? And right. it's like it releases it, it, it and then I'd, I'd call up my mom and I'd be reading it to her and I'd sob through that part of it too. And <laughs> it does release, it, it does yeah. heal. Yeah, it yeah. does. It does. Um, We're about to the point where um, we've got just a couple of minutes left. And this has been so amazing, Donna. And I, we want to share, you know, what you guys have just been doing is you're starting to plant those seeds, right? You're starting to put those touch touch, touchstones down in place. And I think one of the most important things that we can do as, as we do this is start to make space for ourselves to, to write. And this is why Donna and I have put together our Wild Woman Writing Retreat on April 25th through 30th. In fact, let me just share this with you guys because we're super excited about this. Uh, this is going to be a retreat. It's going to be held in the Colorado mountains in Evergreen at the Highland Haven Inn, which is a Creekside Inn, which is just, it's award-winning inn. It's been recognized by national magazines as places to visit. And when Don and I put our, started putting our heads together on this, we've had a lot of fun plant thinking about this haven't we donna yeah absolutely <laughs> and it's 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 a way for what we wanted to do is create a container where people can come together and write their most important soul messages write their most important stories and so this is going to be held um april 25th through 30th and it's really a space where you're going to have some guidance throughout the week. Donna's going to be bringing a lot of her beautiful work. I'm going to be bringing a lot of this. If the whole world could hear one message from you, what is it? And we're, we're, we're weaving all of our pieces together so that we can really help you guys take this story to a next level. And one of the things we were really adamant about this, that this was not a write a book in a weekend workshop. This is not a write a book in five days workshop. This is a give yourself the space and time to really allow the universe to, to download the right work through you. And I think that's what writing really is when you're writing your best work is you're opening up to the magic of what's supposed to be flowing through you, what's supposed to be, what's supposed to come through you how are you meant to make an impact with the messages that you're putting out into the world you want to add to that donna no i think that was beautifully said cammy i think i just i think that have also having 
I guess what I would add is having the a, not only a safe container, but then being with a small intimate group of people, just as we just experienced on this call, there's something really powerful about us sharing our stories with each other yes. and then witnessing each other's stories and witnessing each other's resilient, the pain that we've been through because we've all been through pain. There's just no getting out of life without pain. And so, you know, and then the resilience that comes and the lessons learned and however we're going to put that together, it's like having that opportunity to share it with each other, to go be by ourselves as much as we need to come back in group. There's just something so powerful. I don't think, I think that all of us will be transformed by the end of the five days. There's no yeah. way we won't be. Yeah. So it's going to be magical space and it will be, it will be a really intimate group of people. We've, we've only got a couple of spots left in this because we're keeping it really small. We will be doing it safely so that people can be, you know, be distanced and all that sort of thing. And at the same time, the, the intimacy that will take place amongst the circle of women is going to be really super powerful. So it's really about getting this book that's inside of you to come out and really making the space and time. And I know, you know, I know myself that that's one of the, the, the biggest challenges that life gets in our way and we don't make the space to write. So um, we're doing this together and it's going to be so much fun. Um, this is a couple of the pictures of this, this um, at the Highland Haven. It's, it's right on a creek side. It's, it's really, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. So I'll send you this link. I'll drop this link into the, the page and it will be in an email. Um, it's been, it's got a long list of awards. You can see this, the Highland Haven has been edited or has been Sunset Magazine, Fedora's um, Most Romantic in, in 2009. I mean, it's really just got an amazing list of, it's, it's, it's really, really special space. So um, registration on this is open right now. Couple things on it is, is we've got deadlines coming up on, on having to let the hotel or the inn know how many rooms we have. Um, you can do this in a junior suite. Um, if you do it in a junior suite, there's basically, there's one side and another side in a shared bathroom. Um, if you want to do that, we have to make sure that we're able to pair you up with somebody because right now we've got those people paired up who have chosen this option. Um, so that's $29.97 for a junior suite paid in full, or if you want a payment option, and here's the deal on the payment option. This was originally set up as a three payment option. These will have to be paid off, I think, by the 15th of April. So, you know, if you want a payment option, we'll have to kind of put those payments together fairly quickly. Um, so payments must be paid by the, the 15th of April. Um, we need to guarantee room reservations this next week. So we'll, we would need to have you move on that fairly quickly. If you want a private room, there are a couple of private rooms is available still. Um, this is, um, it's $37.97 paid in full or $39.97 if you wanna do the payment. But again, you'll have to just match that timeline on it. Um, so we're 52 days away. <laughs> and and that's all I'm going to you know I'm not going to I'm not going to go any further into that we're happy both Don and I are happy to to share that with you you know if you have questions on it there's the link to it if you want to go look at it and if you guys want to you know if you have questions that you want to go deeper and and to see if this feels like it's a fit for you just let either one of us know and uh, we would love to have that conversation with you. I can tell you, we have some extraordinary women already joining us. Cindy is one of those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be an amazing week. So would love to have you. Is there anything else you wanna add into this, Donna? I just, I, I hope that some of you will be able to join us because especially some of those deeper stories that you were talking that some of you talked about it's like this could be a very safe like i said a safe container a really great place to flush some of it out and to cammy's point i am not about anybody cranking out anything in some short amount of time um if you know my own story which you don't but my book is going to come out later this year after over a decade so so my first memoir is finally coming out so they take you know books take time um, and they come out when they're supposed to. I'm not saying there's divine, there's divine timing, right? I, I'm there a big believer timing. that 
totally your book comes out exactly when it's meant to you write your most important work exactly when you're meant to and it also takes the space it requires you setting aside the space to make that happen absolutely and then i'm also personally available to anybody if anybody wants to you know have more conversation after today even to try and figure out what do i do where do i go next um, should I, you know, d- take some steps? I'm happy to have conversations with people. So just let me know. And what's your, so, let me just, what's your email, Donna? I'll just drop it in here. So it's real easy. Donna at, at writingwithdonna.com. Donna at writingwithdonna.com. And I'll, so and I'll make sure I include that out. in the follow-up information as yeah. well. So because I don't, I also want you to know that you do have support from us, um, you know, in the context of the retreat and in other ways that right. you know, we opened this There's up There's a lot today, of different so, ways that you could do this. Yeah. So, so want you to the know treat, that the retreat's going to be here. amazing. <laughs> the retreat is number one, the retreat. I'm excited. I'm actually going to start working on my own second book at that retreat too. <laughs> yay. Yay, yay, yay. Well, um, are there any questions be- as we wrap up? Please, yes. Any any questions? Any last questions? We've got a few minutes here. I love the seeds of books that I was hearing about. I got goosebumps so many times. And um, I'm just super excited that um, you guys all were here. I can't wait for those seeds to start taking shape and to start coming out of the ground, out of your heart, out of out into the world. So um Keep your writing going, my friends. Keep your Absolutely. words going. Your 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 message matters. And I truly believe that with all of my heart. It's like if, if I can help, you know, that any one of you, it's like this, like getting our voices out into the world is such an important thing. And that's what we're so passionate about. So Absolutely. go, let's let's get your words out because there's right now, there's people waiting to hear your messages, though hear your stories. So Thanks, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. Take care.